In this video, I'd like to continue talking about the Sierpinski carpet, specifically focusing on finding the area of this fractal. And remember that this fractal is created when we start with a square and we split that square into nine smaller squares. And then the middle of all of those squares, colored in white here, is then removed. And then for each of the remaining eight squares, we do the same process. We split each of these into nine smaller squares and then remove the middle one. And of course, this process is carried out infinitely many times. Every time we have a square, we split it into nine smaller squares and then remove the middle one. And the question is, what is the area of this fractal, this Sierpinski carpet, after that process has been carried out infinitely many times? And to answer that question, we need to think about what is happening step by step. And you can see this image here. This is step Number one, when we split it up into nine equal squares, let me draw this in since we'll need that information. And again, that middle square colored in white is then removed. And let's say that the area at step zero, before we remove any of the squares, we can call that a zero. So let me write this in. We can say this is the area of the original square. And if a sub zero is the area before removing any of the middle squares, then we can say a sub one is the area after this first step has been completed. So now we've removed this middle square here in white and the area of this can be calculated by just thinking about how many squares remain compared to the total size. Or in other words, we have eight squares left out of nine since we started by dividing this up into nine equally sized squares and then took away one of them. So the area after step one, we can say is eight ninths of the area of the original square, which we called a sub zero. And with step two, we take each of these remaining eight squares and we will carry out that same process. We will divide each of these squares into nine smaller pieces and then remove that middle square. And the area of each of these squares here after this smaller middle square is taken out is eight ninths of the area before that middle square was taken out and we have that happen eight different times. So for the area after the second step, it's really eight ninths of the area of this first step. And if we think this through, for each of these squares from step one, we are removing one ninth, all of these squares here in white, from the remaining area that we had. So if we're moving one ninth from each of these, then we're essentially re removing one ninth from that total remaining area. Or in other words, we have eight ninths of what we had in step one. And another way to imagine this is that we could actually divide up this entire grid into these smaller squares and then just count the total amount that we have compared to what we took out. So if we were to split this entire square up into grids this size, there would be nine going across this way and nine going down, meaning that there would be 81 total. And if we count up what we have, well, there's eight in each of these eight remaining squares and eight times eight is 64. But if we, simplify this expression here, notice that a sub one is eight ninths of the original area. So a sub two, the area after the second step is eight ninths multiplied by eight ninths multiplied by a sub one and eight times eight is 64, nine times nine is 81. And this verifies 
with the picture after just counting up how many squares we would have left after removing all of the squares in white. So there are a couple different ways to think about it, but the main idea is that from going from one step to the next, the area is eight ninths of the previous area. Meaning that if we look at step three, we will repeat that process. Each of the small squares will then be split into nine smaller squares where the middle one is taken out. But in each of these smaller squares, there would be eight ninths of the area when comparing it to the small square before that middle square was taken out. And that would be true for each of these. The remaining area will be eight ninths of what it was in step two, meaning that we can say a sub three is really just eight ninths of a sub two. And if we combine this with what we have, we really have eight ninths squared here. And let me rewrite it like that so that we can see the pattern. So a sub two is really eight ninths squared multiplied by, excuse me, this should be a sub zero, multiplied by the original area. And if we apply this formula to a sub three, we would have eight over nine to the third power multiplied by the original area. And if we generalize this pattern, if we continue going from one step to the next, we would see that after the fourth step, we would have that the area at step four would be eight ninths to the fourth power multiplied by the original area. Or we can look at this in the most general case and say that after the nth step, we would have eight over nine raised to the nth power multiplied by that original area. And when you raise eight ninths to higher and higher powers, the overall result becomes smaller and smaller. And you can test this with a calculator. In fact, we were able to see that just going from step one to step two, we had eight ninths, and then 64 over 81 is smaller than eight ninths. And if we look at eight over nine to the third, this would be 512 divided by 729, which when you compare the decimals is smaller than 64 over 81. And the higher this exponent, the smaller this expression will be. And we can reframe this expression using the language of calculus. We can say that we're looking at the limit as n, the number of steps we're taking, goes towards infinity. And we want to know what happens to this expression. What does the overall result approach as the n value gets larger and larger? And this right here is an exponential expression where the base of this expression is smaller than one. And when you raise fractions less than one to higher and higher exponents, the overall result starts to approach zero. Now, if this expression, the base of this expression was greater than one, then raising it to higher and higher powers will have the overall result approaching infinity. But since this is less than one, in fact, if we look at this as a function of n and we graph this, then this function will be exponential decay. It will decrease as the n value increases. In fact, it will approach zero as n gets bigger and bigger. So this expression here approaches zero and this is a constant. Whatever that original area is, depending on what the base of the square started at, but since this is a constant and this gets closer and closer to zero, and in fact, as n approaches infinity, this limit will approach zero, then we essentially have zero multiplied by a constant, which is zero, which means that the area of this Sierpinski carpet, after we carry out this process infinitely many times, is equal to zero.